99.7% of that dance floor was filled with country people. I mean, boots, <laughs> man, I mean, you name it, whatever the Bon Jovi stuff is, the little tassels. Bruce. Hey, Kate. Hey, Anna, man. Hi, Kate. <laughs> We've already had some fun today. We've had a ton of fun. We've had some fun, but I want to get started with our official university podcast. This is Purdue. So flattered to be asked to do this. Oh, we're thrilled to have you. Yeah. I know everyone is excited for this episode. Oh, gosh. So let's go back to your Purdue journey. When did you first find out about Purdue? What made you want to come to Purdue as an undergrad? So John Purdue and I went to high school together. And no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm from this town. Okay. And so I grew up. That as a Boilermaker, basically, it was either that or Ivy Tech, and I chose to root for Purdue. And I thought, uh, it, pretty pretty campus, you know? It, uh, and uh, But I, I also was never gonna go to college. I, I, I had no intentions of going to college ever. Um, I was just gonna get my, Purdue, or my uh, high school diploma and then go out into the workforce. And then you know what happens, amazingly, is when you have two jobs, you're living at home, and all you have is a car payment, if you don't have a college degree, sometimes you can't make ends meet. And so I, I called up my best friend, Sid, and I said, hey, man, let's go to college. He says, you're stupid. I said, no, man, seriously, let's go to college. He goes, OK. So I so we took the SATs. And I have no business ever getting in per, to Purdue, to be honest, with my uh, high school academia background. But um, I had a friend who had a friend. And um, I, I think they kind of just said, you know, roll the dice and see what happens with this kid. It's not going to hurt anything. And then when you get in, you realize you, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities here that go beyond books. Uh, for instance, I sang in the Purdue Glee Club. Yes. And I had never been on vacation. I went to Florida one time in my whole life oh at by age 19, and so I uh, we were able to the, the Purdue Glee Club traveled the world, and I'm like I'll wear a tuxedo to travel the world, <laughs> right? And so uh, so I made the group. Um, that's kind of a story alongside, you know, it's, that's neither here nor there. It may, we may talk about it later on. But um, the Glee Club was really my education at Purdue, to be honest with you. So what made you want to try out for the Glee Club? Did you immediately get to Purdue and see the signs and you're like, I have to go try out for this? That's such a great question. Uh, not, again, not giving a poop about high school. I made my schedule uh, like three days before school started. And so uh, when you make your schedule three days before school starts, there's not a lot of options. And so I, while I'm talking to my counselor, I said, hey, uh, sort of cockily, you know, kind of like, what's the, who are the best singers on Purdue's campus? And she said, hands down, the Purdue Glee Club. Lived here my whole life, never heard of the Purdue Glee Club. Oh. Yeah, or PMO, never been to Christmas show. And so, uh, so I, and I, you got to picture this, I know it's hard, but I had hair that you could pull on from behind and I had an earring and I had a Billy Idol t-shirt on and I may or may not have been uh, hung over, but I went to the Glee Club tryouts and uh, there were these guys in suits and here I am in my Billy Idol t-shirt, but, and they, were, they had all this prepared opera music and I didn't have anything prepared, but they told me that they traveled the world and I'm like, man, I'm in, I want to see some stuff. And so these guys are, I was the last one to go to try out that day. Um, but uh, so these guys are all doing the opera, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. and so I just went to the piano play. That was professional, by the way, it was Italian. You probably don't, you probably don't understand it. Totally. Um, but uh, the, uh, the, I went to the piano player, uh, Didi at the time, and I said, do you know Summertime from the musical Porgy and Bess? And she's like, in what key, darling? And I'm like, I don't know, I don't read music. So I go, summertime. And she's like, oh, yeah, F sharp, got it. <laughs> so she, I mean, I'd never seen that, you know, never seen that. I could, I sang in high school, but I'd never seen anybody just go, in what key, darling? And so uh, uh, I, I did my thing and uh, made the Glee Club. Didn't know, I knew it was a famous, famous group, and I learned a lot about it later, but they 100% were my Purdue education. Why is that? Because I had access to a piano for the very first time in my life. At any time, I could check out a key, go to my own little private practice room. And I, I, a lot of people don't know this, um, Kate, but I didn't touch a piano until second semester of my freshman year. Uh, I, I just, we never had any money when I'd grown up, so we didn't have any instruments. And so 
I, I, I'm like, man, I think I want to teach myself an instrument. And so I took my Sony, Sony Walkman headphones and my cassette player and two sets of batteries. And I started at 11 a.m. and I finished at 7 a.m. But by or 7 p.m. But by the end of the time, I could play one song with both hands. And I'm sure it wasn't perfect, but people would walk by and knew I was playing All Cried Out by Lisa Lisa and the Cult Jam. And girls talked to me. So I was like, that's kind of cool, right? <laughs> Got to keep up with this piano thing. Yeah. And they, they acknowledge my, my presence. <laughs> and so so, uh, so I, that's the story of my, the first time I sat down at a piano and taught me. And that was 100% because in, inspired by PMO and Purdue. And that's uh, probably why I am a thankful Boilermaker and love Purdue. So fast forward, you graduate <laughs> from Purdue. What was your job after college? How fast did you get into this entertainment world? Sure. Well, I graduate with the exotic degree of recreation management. Okay. Now, the epitome of success in recreation management, just like Parks and Rec, the show, is like a whole city's Parks and Rec department director, you know? And But it takes decades <laughs> to get to the top. Yeah. And so I didn't have a job right out of, out of college. Um, that's poor on my part. We'll hit <laughs> silence. Sorry about that. Isn't this the part where I yell at you? No, your I think phone that was Curtis or? Painter sending okay. me an ESPN ticker. Okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> but so as soon as I graduated, um, I didn't have a job in my chosen major. And so uh, I was getting married. And so I took a job as a, a check and fire extinguisher. And it's brainless and it, it takes almost no uh, talent. But what it did was it was it allowed me to see that I need to aspire to maybe do something better, and so uh, and so I started. Uh, that's kind of a long story, but I I, uh, I I sang karaoke okay. all through college. That was my mad money. Was I won karaoke contests? Okay? okay. So the owner of the karaoke bar says, "Hey, you're in that you're in that glee club at Purdue, aren't you?" Yes, sir. Well, I'm looking for a piano player because I've opened a bar across the street and I need a piano player to play music while people eat steak and chicken. And I'm like, well, sir, I play piano. And he's like, no way. So he walked me over. He had a $10,000 Yamaha piano. And so here I am checking fire extinguishers Monday through Friday, Friday night and Saturday night. I'm playing music to digest to <laughs> <laughs> upstairs at Captain's Cove for uh, $12 an hour. What, what? Wow. Yes, professional piano player. Uh, and then what he didn't count on, because what I didn't tell you is, the, sec the, the I was on the second story. The lower story was a comedy club. So it was dinner and a show here in Lafayette. So it was kind of a neat thing for Fridays and Saturdays. Sure. Yeah, but what he didn't, because it was an extra 20 bucks, $10 per person to go down and catch the comedy show. What he didn't count on was not everybody wanted to drop another 20 bucks. And he also didn't count on people wanting to stick around and have a few cocktails after they had their meal. What he also didn't count on is that they'd be like, hey, piano guy, can you play Brown Eyed Girl? Here's five bucks. Can you play Piano Man? Here's five bucks. He didn't count on that. So I almost immediately became in direct competition, unfortunately, not, not because I wanted to, but because it, it, it happened naturally, but I came in with the uh, comedy club downstairs. And so, uh, it, and then, the guy who was the manager, this room right here was empty for the first almost two years of the cactus existence. Okay. The manager at the time here went to my high school and he got wind. They couldn't find a piano player for this room. They tried Indy in Chicago, couldn't get anybody to drive to Lafayette. Exotic Lafayette, I don't get it. But he came and caught a show after he had his steak. And then he was like, you, you need to talk to my bosses because we have a room that would just be this, what you're doing. And so uh, he introduced me to Jim and Sheila Cochran and um, I was hired that, that day. This is what an astute business person I am. So and I told you I'm making 12 bucks an hour to play piano at the other place. Well, I, I'm getting interviewed, let's say you're Sheila. And she says, uh, what are they paying you over there, Captain's Cove? And I got a little chesty, I was like 12 bucks an hour. And she said, what if we gave you 1250? I'm like, that would be a raise. And so that's what kind of businessman you're working. You know how your husband's a statistician. Yeah, he would appreciate 
the sleuthness of my amazing bargaining abilities. There, there was no negotiating. There was no, <laughs> I was like, I just got a raise. <laughs> and I don't have to wait for people to get dessert. So take us back to your first show here. Okay. Can, uh, can you walk us through uh -huh. that night? <laughs> yes. This was a country bar. I know five country songs-ish. Okay. 99.7% of that dance floor was filled with country people. To the, to the till. I mean, boots. <laughs> I mean, you name it, whatever the Bon Jovi stuff is, the little tassels. Okay, so, and people would walk through here, and hear Elton John, and be like, "I'm gonna keep on walking." <laughs> but eventually, a couple of them got tired of dancing, or had a a, 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 a husband that didn't like to dance. So the the opposite sex was would come in here, and it, it it just started to snowball a little bit. The first show. Um, I believe I got $17 in tips, if I remember correctly. What a windfall. Um, but it, it was just a really a lot of fun. And again, I was getting paid to play piano. And I'm telling you, if I had 10 million bucks in the bank, I would have still done it for free. You're, or 12 bucks an hour, 12.50. 12.50. Yeah, 12.50. So, I mean, how, how has it changed throughout the years here? Oh, well, it hasn't changed. We got a new floor last week. It looks beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I did it myself. Uh, I went to Lumber, lumber Liquidators. Um, no, I, uh, how's it changed? We added um, a martini bar, which is now kind of a Jimmy Buffett, Buffetty bar. And then they had, um, it really had, but I gotta be honest, like there's only so much space. Right. And so it hasn't changed a whole lot from the days when it was a, a, a skating rink. And I, you may not even know that. No. But this, this was a roller skating rink I that I attended in because I'm from Lafayette. Wow. Yeah. So they it, ha, it did change a little. If you look over here, uh, that used to be the um, kitchen. Okay. And so they switched the kitchen to way to the other side of the building and made an elevated, I call it the balcony. It's two feet higher than the rest of it, but I call it a balcony because it sounds kind of classy. Um, and then this this was the a access to the kitchen. And then and now there's a bar that's only been there for two weeks. It looks great. So that's new. It Between the floor and that. Uh, You're that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> well, it took 26, 28 years for them to put a, a new floor. <laughs> well, but how has your experience changed throughout the 28 years? You know, like, when was the first time that you were like, oh, I people know me? Okay, yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, and again, I'm not a real big, like, me, me, me. But I will tell you, there was an aha moment. Okay. And... Um, Graduation weekend, uh, probably, let's see, I started in, in 90, so it was probably, it was before 2000. I'll say 98, 90, 97. And graduate, graduate, graduating seniors came down in their cap and gown on Saturday night after graduation. And they said, you're not gonna believe what happened at our graduation today. They, they, they asked all of us to name five things that they're gonna miss about Purdue. And you were like number two on the list. Uh, uh, from the scene that when the senior gives the senior speech, um, whatever that's called, I forget. Commencement speech. Yeah, but when they the, the the one senior that's picked to speak sure. for, on behalf of the class, and they she said, "Here's the five things," and it was like Harry's and the fountain, and Bruce the piano man at the cactus, and I thought they were not telling the truth. It just seemed too crazy, but that that was an aha moment when you kind of realize you're impacting some lives and what a blessing right yeah. absolutely yeah. okay so walk us through you know you have certain rituals and traditions i personally have not seen you in probably 11 12 years that's good you should take decades off okay. <laughs> well i'm gonna refresh my memory tonight oh uh, promise so but but tell us how you come up with these like how are some of these iconic traditions formed right well, the big the one wouldn't you say the big one is my little catchphrase when i say social and everybody drinks at the same time peer pressure yeah um i i just came out of that kind of spontaneous and it it, it caught on that that's kind of a neat little thing that's mine mm -hmm. um I, I i will tell you this I have people still reach out to me and tell me they don't know the real words to a lot of the songs. When they go and they hear them, they're like, oh yeah, that Bruce song. Oh yeah, and, and they sing the, you know, the- Pretty either, version. Yeah, colorful words or my version. Yeah. And so that's kind of, that's pretty cool. 
That's awesome. Because you know, because because again, those are moments that are born out of out of spontaneity. Yep. And then it, when something sticks, it's it, that's pretty cool. And I hang my hat on that. What about the choreography? What, how are you feeling up there when people <sighs> people know your moves? So my wife is a choreographer. She has taught dance since she was twelve. Oh my years goodness! Old. Like a real yes, choreographer. A real choreographer. <laughs> okay. Tap, jazz, lyrical, funk, hip hop. She does it. Everything but ballet. So, I just decided one night I was going to make up sign language for country roads. Okay. And I'll be doggone if it didn't absolutely stick. And my goal is, I hope, I hope that I'm 91 years old in an assisted living program and they bring in the little entertainment person that's going to lead bingo or whatever. And before they start it, they start and do, do some songs. And then, like, I hope I, one person just spontaneously doesn't know me, but starts doing the country roads. I pray that I see that most <laughs> selfishly. I selfishly hope I get to see that moment because I think that would be kind of cool, too. Okay, so we're getting ready for a Thursday night at the Cactus I'm sorry that right I just now. rambled. No, no. We're getting ready for a Thursday? Is it Thursday already? It's Thursday. It is. It's Thursday. What, what are the, what's the feeling like up there on a Thursday? People are trickling in and all of a sudden it's packed. I used to, it used to be like the first night when I made 17 bucks. It used to be uh, you kind of hoped that people would just keep trying you out, <laughs> yeah. right? But there, there became a time when you get here at seven o'clock and, and the lines are already formed and you're like, they're not here because of the drink specials or they want to run to the dance floor. You know, that, that what an amazing, like, sh 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 sh, you know, and I, hope, I, hope, I know you don't know me very well, but I hope that I come across uh, as humble because I've always just been so thankful and appreciative that a thousand people on a Thursday plan their night around me. What an amazing, amazing gift and blessing. And so I try and honor that by, I never, I have never mailed in a show. I have, I have a kamikaze <laughs> housefly like trying to get me. But I've never mailed in a show. I've, I've been sick a lot of times and I'm not trying to look for a like, oh. But I will tell you like, there I could, if I wanted to, I could yeah. put it on autopilot and be like, all right, here's, 10 bucks for Bon Jovi. Let's go. I'm yep, going to play yep. it. You guys sing it. You can do that. But I've, I've, I've always come from a different philosophy about piano bars. When I was 21, I would go to Indianapolis and watch these dueling piano bars. And the things that really rubbed me wrong about them, they were talented, super talented. You line up 100 of those piano players, 99 of them are going to absolutely kick my butt. But that's not what I think is important. What I've always thought was important is, is you do the song that somebody pays you five bucks for, you do it the way you think they're gonna to wanna to hear it. So what does that mean? You don't do it twice as fast. You don't cut it in half. You don't, you don't, don't take advantage of their money because the clientele in my room is 90% college students. Yeah. And I knew how much money I had in college. I didn't have any. And so I try and, I, I, I try and earn because I've been there. Yeah. And I don't, I don't do, we don't do the fight songs 30 times a night. We don't do country versus uh, rock and roll just to see how much money you brought into the piano bar that night because I want to, I want to put it in my pocket. I've always come at it from a different philosophy. I feel like if you come and you give the people something, mm -hmm. you make them feel special somehow, you try and touch as many as you can. But if you make somebody feel special, they're going to want to come back. I don't want a, a college person waking up the next day and be like, oh my gosh, I dropped 50 bucks on the piano guy. I can't afford to go back for a month. I'd rather you spend 10 or 15 or less. Don't spend any. But if you want to, if you want to really, if you want to hear your song, you want to have a couple of drinks, I'd rather have you drop 10, 15 bucks and be able to come back the next week. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's been my philosophy from the get go. One of our production assistants was <clears> saying, <throat> You know, when you got here, she's like, oh, he, you know, Bruce made me feel so special on my 21st birthday. Mm. I got a shout out from him and it was in 2020 and it was virtual. And she still remembers that and was talking about it. And I thought that was such a cool. She remembers it after three years. Yeah. Gosh, what a memory. So tell us about 2020. <laughs> 2020. Well, first of all, I'd never been in a pandemic, so it was all new. Me too. If you recall, you, you the, the craziness 
of when everything shut down mm -hmm. and you didn't know if you were gonna walk out your front door, yeah. breathe the wrong air and keel over. It was so crazy. We just had no point of reference. And for, so that was, I was 52. I, I was ready to retire at 50, but here it is. Uh, now a pandemic's hit. For 15 years, I've wondered, hey, how do I, how do I tell my Boilermakers thank you for all those years and give me the best job ever? How do I say thanks? Do I write her by a damn card, you know? And then the pandemic hit, the Facebook, Facebook show started popping up and I thought, holy cow, I could do a show. They can't talk to me, they can't give me money, but I hope I can just give a little bit of normalcy, for lack of a better word, in a crazy time. And, <clears throat> pardon me, so that was my, I, I was like, oh my gosh. You know, and I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't accept any money. One person found out I had Venmo, gave me a hundred bucks and I gave it to Food Finders. But that was literally out of all those shows, 12 weeks of shows, that was literally the only person that ever gave me anything. Um, and so I was able to say thank you. But like they say, when you do something from a pure place, you receive a hundred times. And so now no money, but what did we get? I'm here to tell you on my little iPad, this is the actual iPad. On my iPad, that very first night, you could feel the energy as I was singing and looking down at all these people who were, you could feel it electronically. It's, it's, it's hard to explain. And I also have my cell phone right next to that. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting texts from my friends and they're like, do you realize 15,500 people are watching you right now? And no I'm like, pressure. I'm like, well, first of all, I don't know it because I don't know how to find <laughs> out. But I'm like, <laughs> so I'm playing and I'm going, well, that's pretty cool. And then the next text line said, Dave Matthews only has 9,800 people watching him right now. And then I'm still playing, play my piano and, and my idiot friends are, they're like, yeah, but did you, Metallica has 22,000, so you suck. <laughs> but that, again, it was just a crazy time. And so I didn't, I didn't do it to jump on a bandwagon, bandwagon. I jumped on it to give back. And I think, I hope, it sounds like people understood that from a pure place. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I wanted to do it. Everybody talked, oh, let's get through two weeks and then, you know, yeah. it'll be over. And so I did do it um, as long as I could. And unfortunately, the very last week, um, my brother passed away, not from COVID, but um, I just wasn't in a place. He passed away that Thursday afternoon before a, th a Thursday show. And so um, I just wasn't in a, in a place to um, give if give, you know, I was yeah, in a absolutely. sad place. Um, so, and, that, and unfortunately that's where uh, those ended. Um, but it was a unique time. And every week I got so much from, alumni showing me videos of their little kid, you know, drinking water going, Kelly Kerr, <laughs> you know, and just like people, people having parties to ga gathering parties where you felt, you know, eight, eight people safe to just to be normal a little bit. And I, I do feel like that's probably uh, my personal biggest feather in my cap is that I made people feel um, better in a unknown, awful time. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. So you find out the cactus is reopening. Right. What, yeah. what were you thinking? Well, first thing I was thinking was, crap, I just told everybody I was done. And <laughs> now I have to come back. Well, and I, and I, well, and I didn't know. So it, I had, I had said goodbye to Purdue. I, 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 you know, I had done my big at where else? And I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to step away from campus and thank you for the memories. Right. And then that was May. And July, Ethan calls me and says, hey, I just bought the cactus. You're my first call. I want, I want you to come back. And I'm like, ah, oh. I, I mean, I want to, because I never got, I didn't get to finish the way I wanted to finish. Yeah. I wanted to do what I'm doing now and be able to tell everybody by the way I want to, you know, get, you want one last chance to catch a show? You got three months. Yep. So come back if you can. If not, God bless, right? So, and, and, but but then I asked Ethan, we sat at that table, and I'm like, how often are you wanting me to play? He's, I, I want, I'd like every Thursday. Oh, okay, because I was getting real used to playing once and twice a month. I was kind of enjoying that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd really like you every Thursday. And I said, well, <clears throat> man, maybe I may, I, I hope I got maybe three years left, I was hoping. 
But I'll take Kate, uh, 55 years old, and I sang a lot of songs on these vocal chords. And, and it just takes a lot of energy to do it at a certain level that I want to do it at. And here's what I refuse to have. I refuse to have an alumni from, you were 2016, is that what you said? 2012. 2012, you're 2012. Uh, but I don't want somebody from 2012 or t 2002 to come back and be like, oh gosh, it was great seeing Bruce, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't like when I was here or it wasn't as good. I I'd rather growl out, you know, bow out gracefully and, and just step away doing something at a certain level. But I'd be honest, I did feel a little bit uh, like Tom Brady-ish going, I quit, I'm back <laughs> within three months. You know, I, I, as a matter of fact, there were like, there were four people who drove or flew from Fort Lauderdale, from Texas, from Atlanta, Georgia, and from Colorado Springs to my last, last show at where else, who I personally called. And I said, hey, uh, the cactus has <laughs> brought this opportunity up to me, but I know you guys came back to the last show. I, I, I just want to apologize and see what you guys think. And, and to the letter, they were like, shut up, you're stupid you know, thank you for, for reaching out, but yeah. you don't have to ask our, our permission. Yeah. But I, I just, I felt bad. So I'm like, I, these people spent a lot of hard earned money to come see my last show. But what a blessing to be able to finish where you started under your terms. Yep. Right? Right. If we could all be so lucky to do that. Okay, I'm gonna ask you something that might be hard because you've, you've been here a long time. You have a lot of memories. Is there, one or two memories that really stand oh, out to you? Well, uh, the first that pops in my head immediately was the first Thursday after 9-11. Oh. Yes. It, the last place in the world I wanted to be was leading a party and celebrating and drinking. I wasn't in the mood to put on a show. I thought, I'll be honest, I thought, zero people were gonna be here that night. And I pull up in the parking lot and it is like a breakfast club line. Oh and I, I, I thought at first, you're kind of like, wow, do these people watch the news, right? Because I just, I wasn't in the mood. But you know what, I, there's gonna be some amazing um, psychology studies that come out from around that time because people just needed two hours to not be clicking to every news channel while a commercial was on and just stuck to the TV. People needed that. I didn't, I, I learned it that night. And we did God Bless the USA, we did the National Anthem five times each. Every, and everyone was probably just like. Oh, cry, I mean, I, I, I sobbed uncontrolled. People were like, cowboys and, and, and frat boys were just, I love you, man, America. <laughs> You know, it, it was it was palatable. It was honest and it was and and it was reassuring because you hear a lot of stuff about the younger generation. But I'm here to tell you, man, they it was what are they doing to us? You know, this is our country. Very patriotic. It, it was refreshing. It still didn't you still didn't forget. Right. Never forget. Um, but that I mean, the, that's the biggest night. Um, selfishly, the my personal was probably the, the night my wife walked in here. All right, let's hear the love table. story. Well, oh, it was exotic. Uh, <laughs> she had a gray hooded sweatshirt and a ponytail, no makeup, but she was light years the most beautiful person I'd ever seen in my life. And she sat down at this table, and I'm just talking. I'm playing piano, and all the whole night she's and I knew her all her friends. It was just her first time in here. She had just turned 21. It's, or, or turn, she had just came in, it was her first time. And so, uh, so at the end of the night, I'm doing my thing, and I'm talking to the people, and her friends had gone off to the dance floor. I'm doing, I'm just talking, ah, oh, thanks for coming, but I had one eye on her. And she stood up to leave, and she put, pulled her ponytail out, did one of these things, you know, and then started to put it back. And I just said, hey, your hair looks really good down. You should just leave it down, it looks good. I mean, I completely, like, got in between the two people that were talking to me and said, you should just leave your hair down. Rudely, you know, like, excuse me, Noah, part the Red Sea. <laughs> and so she's like, oh, really? You like it down? I'm like, oh, she talked back to me. So I went, Pew! and I'm like, yeah, it looks really good down. You should leave it down. You're pretty. <laughs> you know, so, 
But, but she talked to me. And we struck up a, 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 just a, a connection almost immediately. I will share one thing. She'll probably hate me for doing this. I've never done it in my whole life. And I've never done it since, obviously. But she, I felt like she was starting to um, not get uncomfortable, but she was starting to like want to leave and be with her friends. And I reached down and I grabbed her pinky finger and I held pinkies with her. Yeah, gonna Big lose move. a lot of gonna lose a lot of guy points, <laughs> but but I held, we held pinkies, and so and and we just never we were not unconnected uh, to sound kind of uh, since then. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, okay. she's the same. She's a boilermaker. Oh, see, I married a boilermaker. Hmm. Did anybody else at this table marry a boilermaker? <laughs> no. Oh, weird. <laughs> That's awkward for me. I bet. <laughs> okay, so how did you decide? How did you decide that you were going to retire? Like you got this opportunity sure. back. Sure. So, at the I, I played from August until the end of first semester, and it was it it was crazy fun. It was like 2012. Three thousand people in here a night. People were like, "Cat, this is open." And, uh, and football team was crushing it. But I'll tell you, that three weeks for Christmas break, I was tired pup. And I talked to my wife and I said, I said, I, I don't think you can get much better than this. Uh, I, I think I think I want to walk away because I want to I want to do like this. This is what I feel, you know, when it feels good. Like go out with a bang. Yeah, kind of. And and so I, when I came back in January, I said, hey, Ethan, man, I know we talked about maybe three years, but I, I said, I'm gonna give you three scenarios and your choice. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna hang them up. So I can either hang it up now in January and shake your hand and say thank you. Or I can go through the end of the semester, shake your hand and say thank you. Or if you'd like, I'll go through the end of the fall. And we'll do one more football season. Um, and he said, oh, I'll take the football season, please. And so I'm like, OK. Uh, and so that, uh, but there wasn't really any, you know, I didn't, I wasn't sore. I, I just, I, again, I just want to do it at a certain level. And I don't want to uh, ever, ever have to feel like I have to put it on autopilot just to get through. You know, because this is too, um, this is my baby. Yeah. This is my room. You know, I started this stinking room. And so, and and that, that picture of me, like, at, I, I, I'm sure, because I just met you tonight, that I've never told you this story. But. I'm sorry, I'm sure too. <laughs> I'm positive you didn't dream about this. But when Jim and Sheila Cochran, they were going to change the, um, the decorations in here. It was all cowboy stuff. Hey, we're thinking about putting surfboards and shark heads and some parrots up in the room. Kind of give it your Jimmy Buffett feel. Oh, and we're thinking about painting a giant picture of your face. <laughs> and I know we don't know each other very well, but the idea of, first of all, memorializing myself with a giant neon face, it, it just was a nightmare. And I said, no, 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 thank you. But why don't we just do like some palm trees and the ocean and a seagull? <laughs> well, you know, you, you built this room and this is kind of your room. And we, we really want to do is we've hired an artist that's going to, paint you. I'm like, oh, you already hired an artist. Okay. <laughs> so I, I was never comfortable with that. Um, it was very kind, but I, I have grown to appreciate that. Um, but here's what I didn't want. When, when that first came out, I didn't want somebody walking in for the first time brand new and being like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Look, that guy must love himself. There's a big damn picture of himself on the wall. You know, I, I, I just, that's where my mind goes. I don't, right. I want, I'm here for you. I don't want you to think like, wow, are you lucky to be able to come out and hang out with me tonight? Yeah. Because I've been to shows where people gave off that vibe. I am the antithesis of that vibe, I hope. You know, and so that's why I was just always uncomfortable. But I love it and it means the world to me now. Be, because, it, and Jim and Sheila did it for me because I built this room for them. Right. So it's, it's and, and, and innumerable blessings with this job. We've touched on this a little bit, but you know, what does it mean to you that you're 
thousands of people have come to see you, hundreds of thousands over the really? years. I think it's like a million and a half, but I don't want to correct oh, your wow, numbers. Wow. Okay, well, yeah. what? <laughs> so millions have seen you. I think so. Well, so I'm a, I'm a conservative person. I'm conservative fiscally, and um, I, I, I've done uh, uh, 2,600 shows, and I, I try to be conservative with the numbers, but there'll be a thousand people here tonight. And then I used to play Fridays and Saturdays. And so, I mean, conservatively, I, I said an average of 350 people a night. So we had our millionth person come through in 2015. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So by my numbers. Um, and so, and we gave, we had a giveaway and the, the poor person before and the poor person afterwards, we still gave them a little plaque because I feel bad. I made a little plaques. trophy. Yeah. Um, okay, but so millions of people have yeah. seen you. But what does it feel like, what is that feeling that people in this community are an iconic Boilermaker figure? It's hard to wrap your brain around. I mean, it really is. Um, but I'd be lying if I didn't say almost every single vacation wherever we're at, there's somebody who's a Boilermaker. And recognizes you? Yeah. Or or I see a Boilermaker sweatshirt, I'm like, hey, Boiler Up. And they're like, Piano Man. I know you. <laughs> yeah. And a lot, some people don't even know my name. It's just Piano Man. Yeah. You know, and, and so that, it, it is kind of remarkable. Um, my kids used to get a little tired of it. You know, like, really, Dad? Really? <laughs> Can't we just go down the slide at Flamingo here in Vegas? Uh, do, do your kids come? <laughs> See they've you? been they've been to a couple shows. I don't know if you know this, but typically bars are 21 and older. Oh. Yeah. So they're 18 okay. and 17. Okay. But they've been to a couple shows of mine, and I snuck them in one time, uh, just for like a 10 minute thing, uh, before. And I I'm gonna ask. This will be a lot of pressure. I'm gonna look right into the camera, Ethan. My last show. Can my kids please come for like an hour? I'll get a babysitter next. Thanks. <laughs> That's amazing. There's a lot of pressure now. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Ethan. Yeah, and excise. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're going to be here. <laughs> yeah, we probably just made a whole bunch of witnesses. So this Boilermaker community and this spirit, you know, you <clears throat> talked about 9-11. Yeah. Very, very apparent that night. Yeah. But what does it mean to you, you know, breakfast club mornings, <sighs> football season, basketball games? So I went to Purdue for seven years, 14 semesters. I like paying tuitions. But I went to zero breakfast clubs, zero. I hate mornings. I love sleep. So having this job and having to have a voice that comes back, you know? Yep. A couple cups of coffee. Oh, and I don't even drink coffee. No. But I, I'll do a five hour energy shot. No, but the, the, you don't need anything. The energy yeah. that college students bring to the, to the day, to every Thursday is unmatched. I, 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 I try. I have literally tried to give back as much energy as I get, and it is impossible. I have never, ever done it. I try, but it's impossible. You get so much. And, it, and, and, and uh, I, have you ever performed? I, have you ever been a performer? Like dancer, singer? Yeah, in yeah? high school. OK, so you know the rush a little bit of being on stage and doing something for a large audience. Sure. Well, it, it's an amazing, and you get, you get that, that ego boost every week. But you, again, you try and give back more. That, but there are nights when you can't even hear yourself think. It's remarkable. So what do you have planned throughout your last couple of shows? Any sneak peeks you want to give to our audience? So I've, I've well, first of all, um, I'm going to mix the, the very last show um, we're going to mix up. It's going to be about half a piano man show or a typical show, piano and guitar. And then the second half, I'm going to bring my, I have a band that I've formed okay. and not just your average band, but I've got eight or nine folks that are going to join me on stage and I'm just going to rock it as best I can for the last two, three hours till they kick me out. Um, I couldn't be more excited, uh, and, and a lot of them are Boilermakers. I think oh, amazing. I think eight of the nine are Boiler Purdue Purdue grads, or uh, almost graduated. Anything 
Anything you want to tell our listeners, your loyal fans, before uh, we wrap up? Gosh, I, again, there's no way to say thank you enough. There's there's no words, but I hope that I have conveyed to them just how much I I'm thankful, and I am a Boilermaker. I bleed gold and black. As a Cub fan and a Purdue fan, you kind of choose a life of sorrow. <laughs> But there's always tomorrow, and there's always the next game. And uh, I, I, will, I will die a Boilermaker, and I'm so blessed to be a Boilermaker. Um, so I, I just, I really can't say thank you enough to them uh, for, for accepting me and giving me the best job ever as an alumni. Well, we can't thank you enough for your time. Oh, it's very kind, Kate, thank you. <laughs> We're so excited for your last show. Uh, We're so wait. excited to be here live for a show in October. Yes. It'll be awesome. We're going to feature Curtis Painter. We are, we are in his song request. <laughs> okay, we're going to end with some rapid fire, and I didn't prepare uh, you for uh, these. You don't have any notes on these. Nope. Okay. Has there ever been a requested song that you didn't know? Oh, yeah. Hunt, N- like, name tons. a couple. Uh, and the God of Vida. I don't know that one. Either. Right. <laughs> St- stupid. <laughs> no, no, no. Go ahead. What's your favorite song to perform? Recently, I, I learned, um, I broke a guitar string. I always play Creep by Radiohead on guitar. And recently, I broke a guitar string towards the end of the show. And I was like, ah, I could just do this on piano. I'll do it on piano. And there are a few songs where I still have my A plus voice and like to kind of show it off a little bit. And Creep by Radiohead is way, way up there. Used to be Walking in Memphis, and I still love Walking in Memphis. We heard you play that earlier a little bit. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, I still love it. But if I currently, like, I, I love Radiohead by Creep. What's the strangest oh, yeah. request you've ever read? Uh, <sighs> strangest request. Um, I've had people, my mom is getting divorced. Do you know any nice people in the room that you could introduce her to? And I'm like, huh. I mean, I met my wife in here, so there's a chance, right? So you're playing matchmaker. Okay? Yeah, little pulling out the old arrow and playing Cupid. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, what's your least favorite song? That I requests? hate If I Had a Million Dollars by Bare Naked Ladies. It was asked for three times a night for 15 years. Okay. If I had a million dollars, I hate that song. I never want to play it again. I I don't even know that song. Oh, good. Don't learn it and (laughs) don't ask for it. Okay. What's the most requested song? Uh, Sweet Caroline or Piano Man or Living on a Prayer. Ah, okay. Okay. What's, what would you say the genre most requested is? Uh, gosh, I hate to say it because I'm not a big country fan, but if I, I would guess a little bit, the last 10 years at least, more country than the good stuff. You don't like country? Oh, did I say that? <laughs> um, what is a song that's frequently request, requested that surprises you? Do you have any of those? Last week. Uh, what did I play? I, I played um, Sugar Cookies. What did I play? Oh, uh, d- uh, build a beat, boys, and free my soul. I want to get lost in your rock and roll. Drift away. They killed it. I'm like, what? I stopped in the middle of the song. I said, is this in a movie? Like, how do you guys know this song? <laughs> and they're like, no, we know. I go, well, then you have cool parents, and you should come back next week. Um, what's your go-to drink at the cactus? <laughs> Water. I... I learned a long time ago, you make your best decisions when you are not under the influence. I learned that. I didn't never got in trouble. Just want to preface that. Okay. But um, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty lame. I lead this great big party, but I just drink water. I love that. <laughs> Room though. temperature water if you want to get really involved. Oh, wow. Room temperature water is best for your vocal cords. Hot's bad, cold's bad. Room temperature. Got it. Okay. As, a, as a professional yeah, interviewer, for my voice, I'm just yeah. here to help. Does anyone else have any questions that I didn't ask? Oh, we're going to act like we know there's other people here? Now we are. <laughs> Nothing? Is anyone dying to know anything? Teresa, did I miss anything? You, know, you always ask for people's names and like what they're studying yeah. at Purdue. Like, anything stand out? Like, 
uh, majors and uh, you get a lot of cool names. Like I like name. I, I try and get to know the people during the free hour and their names, their hometown, their major, and then their song. So I just enjoy to be just to be very bland about it. I really enjoy getting to know those brand new students. And it's not a it's not gimmicky. I hope it's not gimmicky. But my goal is is that let's say there's ten people tonight that are here for the first time. I want eight of them to have a really good time. You're not gonna make you're not gonna make the whole world happy all the time. But what if eight of those ten people has a really good time? Then it grows. Yeah. Right. And they bring their friends. Those eight people bring a virgin, or a, a person here for the first time. I call them virgins. The next week, and then they're like, "Hey, watch this. Watch this. I was a virgin here last week." He he knows me. Watch this. Check it out. Oh, hey. You know, and that. But that's how things grow. As long as it's not BS. As long as it's not contrived. You know, it has to be natural. And I think that's one. That is one thing that besides being a, a pretty nice guy, I'm a pretty genuine person about, yes. you know, uh, and I can, lead a, I can lead a pretty good party. I don't know if people really appreciate how hard it is to lead a, a party and always being on. for four hours straight at 100 miles an hour. Yep. You know, it is not easy. And that's part of the reason why I'm gonna say, I'm gonna step away now because <laughs> I'm tired. I wanna just mow my lawn and walk my dog. Do you go home feeling like totally drained oh. though? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, oh, wiped out. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I immediately throw my clothes in the laundry because they are disgusting, and I uh, jump in the shower, and I sleep till noon every day of my life. Every day of my life. That's I why you didn't do Breakfast Club. That's why. Loathe. What a great <laughs> invention, though. Mm, singing at 7 a.m. <laughs> well, we can't thank you enough. Gosh, I had a ball. I'm so uh, honored for you guys to even think of me to ask this. So oh, I'm, my gosh. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. We're going to have fun Thanks, tonight. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, crew. Yay. My first crew. Motley crew. <laughs>